What's going on guys? It's Kyle with DTOM Knives and Gear and today we're going to be talking about the EMP EDC Thick Boy. This is a prototype uh, from EMP EDC. John over there at EMP EDC has done an amazing job with his new kind of a uh, you know, smaller knife company. A lot of these, we have a lot of these kind of coming up, right? It's a, uh, you know, Luff Concepts, uh, just a ton of these smaller makers and knife designers bringing their vision to market. And uh, EMP EDC has done that very, very well. Uh, the first knife that I did pre-order from him was the EMP EDC Nimble. This is, uh, <laughs> if you've not seen my videos on this knife, Definitely go check it out. There's quite a few because I also have an amazing customer service uh, experience with John. And so right off the bat, that makes me happy. Uh, he really does care about his customers. And so whenever I was on the list to get this, I was so fucking excited because this is why I was excited. The, the actual aesthetic look of this knife really gets me going. Um, it's not a big knife. You guys know that I'm usually a big knife guy, but I've got some pretty smaller knives. But see, the thing about John is, and his designs is, they are smaller knives compared to what I usually like. But the design itself fits very well for somebody with big hands. The nimble and this, it's no exception. This thing, I think, just looks sexy as shit. I really uh, dig the cle the worn cleaver blade that it has. Now, granted, as you can see with your blade cutting length, you know, and uh, handle ratio, it's definitely not got the blade length or the cutting edge that a lot of people, some people have. Like, you know, I've got to have this. You know, I'm not one of those that actually cares about that because my duty tasks that I do on a daily basis are relatively light anyway, and I don't need it. However, my personal preference is larger blades because I'm a big dude and it's just my thing. But I love John's designs and the fact that he makes this knife that is a little bit smaller than what I'm used to fit my hand like a damn glove. This is a very, very comfortable knife because it has this very generous finger toil. So before we actually get into the uh, um, you know, aesthetic or fuck me, the um, ergonomics and stuff. What are we working with here? So basically, we have the OD Green Micarta titanium uh, bolsters and then titanium backspacer pocket clip, lock bar insert, running on ceramic bearings. Um, so very high quality. Who makes this knife? Well, the the, the company that made the Nimble was QSP. QSP killed it with this uh, with this build. They did an amazing job. He switched it up a little bit this time. This one is made by Best Tech. Best Tech is another company kind of, you know, stepping up their game, especially with the OEM work that they're doing. And this one is no exception. The build quality of this guy uh, is really, really on par I would even dare to say with Riot guys, I know, I know, it's kind of hard to say that because I'm a huge Riot fan because they do such great work. They really nailed it on this. Now, the differences between something that I'm usually used to with a Riot uh, build is the detent. The detent on this is a little light for my preference. It's not too light, but my preferences uh, are definitely more of a stronger detent. Um, however, because of the way he does this cutout and the hole, it's very intuitive and it doesn't take much to, like, if I try to do the detent test straight up and down, it will do like that. Uh, but, I mean, if I give it any kind of a authority, it comes out and I didn't ever find myself not having it come out whenever I was trying to. Whenever I tried to get this thing out, it came out with authority. has to do really with the, I think, the thickness of the blade and the weight of the blade, I think it really does, it's kind of a perfect little balance with not having a strong enough detent, but a good balance to be able to see. I was trying to really do it light and it's still locked up. Um, so I say it's a light detent, but it's not a bad detent in by no means. It's just lighter than some of my preferences that I have. Uh, however, this is probably the most fall shut action on a knife I have ever handled. Uh, I like playing this game. Oh. <laughs> I like to reduce it and then boom, getting my thumb out of the way. Obviously, that's just fun for me. Not everybody likes doing this. Like, why would you do that? I, it's fucking fun. Uh, but you can let it fall right there and then boom. 
this fall shut action is addictive. Now, also for my preferences, I like a controlled fall shut. Uh, something like the Evo that does fall and then is a control fall shut. That right there is kind of my personal preference and I think everybody's a little bit different whenever they, they have that. But I have to admit, when I had this thing in pocket and carrying it, that is fun. It's just so much fun to have a knife with this kind of fall shut action. A guillotine, that's what it is. It's absolute guillotine and, uh, and I loved it. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, of course, with a whole deployment, you can do the thumb, you can do the reverse flick, you can do the in index finger flick. I mean, even with this jimping on here, sometimes I can even do the front flick on this and I haven't seen anybody else do the front flick because the uh, jimping on this is actually really nicely done and it gives you very good grip to where I can do that. It's not the, it's not designed to be a front flipper, so it's not the easiest to do, uh, but it made this knife a real fidget toy. Um, and of course, that's saying a lot because this is one of the most fidgety knives that I, that I have in the collection is the Nimble because you have so many different options there. Um, it is S35VN on the blade steel, which is different than the Nimble. This one is, they want, he wanted to keep the price point. These things are about $310 at the base price. He wanted to try to keep it as low as possible. If he would have went with the M390, it would have been closer to a $400 knife. He didn't want to go there. That was definitely a hesitation for me at first when I heard it was the S35VN. S35VN is an excellent steel. It's actually an American made steel, which I like that. Um, and it has a little bit more stainless properties than M390 as far as what I can see, especially being friends with Kevin Lefty EDC and his ass juices. If you don't know about that joke, it's hilarious. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he's had quite a few M390 blades uh, rust on him and usually in this area where you see here in this little bowl, which I love this design, but in that blasted area is sometimes where that happens. So I'm really not it's really not a big deal for me for it being S35VN because I have a lot of other blades in S35VN and it's a great steel. Um, however, whenever I first heard about the knife, I was thinking it was going to be M390, but he decided to go with S35VN because he needed to keep that price point where he wanted it and he, you know, he did that. $310 for these materials is on par with you know, every other knife that you have to this quality. Uh, one of the things with that fall shut action when I sometimes have that, it is not, it doesn't, uh, it has blade play. It's not centered. You know, I got to tighten it back up and then the fall shut action is gone. That is not the case with this guy. It is locked up 100% solid um, and dead centered. Beep. And, you know, so it's kind of defying my, my logic here on how this thing falls shut the way it does and still stays perfectly centered. Uh, Kevin said that he has had the pivot, the pivot walk. I have not, and trust me, I have flicked this thing and done this for hours. <laughs> um, and I haven't had that issue, so that's very good. All the hardware on this guy is T8. Uh, John over at EMP EDC is a knife enthusiast. He's a knife guy. He knows that most of the community doesn't like T6s on the hardware. So all the hardware on this thing is a T8. Thank you, sir. All of us love that. That is a great thing. Because there are a lot of companies out there, even these smaller uh, American-made companies, that aren't doing that. And uh, I highly, highly appreciate it. For sure. Uh, one tool to take it apart. It is a captive pivot, not a free-spinning pivot. I love that. Uh, it's just really, really well done. Best Tech did an excellent job. You don't have very, you don't have any transitions from the micarta to the titanium bolster. It is, it's just really, really nice. Like I would have thought that this thing was made by Riot, uh, like Kevin from Lefty EDC said, uh, if it wasn't for that detent. And like I said, it's just not as good as, or it's not as strong as I like personally but it is not an issue for the knife uh, at all the one thing that you that some people like to do for their test is can you shake it out you can shake it out um, but it's never had any issue like in my pocket where I felt like it's gonna come open in the pocket at all not even in the least and it's mainly because I mean doing that test isn't really fair because of the weight of the blade you can see here if I can I mean it's got a good detent my preferences are stronger 
just because that's the what, the what I like. I mean, they're one of the stronger detent knives that I have, uh, which makes this knife very fun. It's the Leon Maul uh, Field Duty EDC. It's got a very strong detent, and I like that on this knife. Uh, it does not have a false shot action, though. I mean, it's a shaker. <laughs> and so that's just a preference for mine. But God almighty, you're talking about fun. <laughs> this thing was an absolute blast to carry and uh, to show off. I had so many people at work uh, who really dug this knife. So let's talk, let's go back to the ergos on this knife. Okay, so aesthetically fucking amazing. I love this thing and this major generous finger troll, obviously something that I must have in a knife of this size to make it good for me. One of the reasons for that is because on this regular finger troll and I come down you see how my pinky is, if it even gets on the handle, it's right here on this area where it pokes. This doesn't feel very comfortable with my hand size. If you've got a little bit smaller hands, it will probably do better, or even a little bit wider if, if it's possible, uh, to where it comes off. Uh, I don't feel as locked in. I never, even on the knives that you know, maybe this would round it off or come back this way. Even on those knives, I still never carry and hold the knife in the backed up grip when it has this some amazing finger troil. As you can see, my finger is nowhere near that blade. The jimping comes all the way up, so my thumb is directly in the in the path of that jimping to give me grip locked in. There is no way anybody's taking this away from me or it's slipping out of my hand or anything like that. It is one of the most uh, ergonomic locked in knives that I have, uh, that I have felt, um, and that's saying a lot. I absolutely love this grip, and it is so very comfortable to cut with. Uh, cutting carbon, now this is not my knife, this is a prototype, so I did very light cutting, and then today all we are gonna do for our cut test is we are gonna cut some cardboard with it, just so you can see this grip, slice. I mean, it's a cardboard cutting, like cardboard sees it, and it fucking runs. That's how best, that's how good this thing cuts cardboard. Um, it is, uh, you know, kind of like this blade shape, uh, kind of reminds you maybe of the, the Runtley, the Finch knives Runtley. Definitely totally different knives. I'm talking about the blade shape. And I always said that that would be a cool, you know, box cutter or whatever. Fuck that. I mean, this thing screams through cardboard. Uh, so cutting is Obviously what a knife is supposed to do and cutting is not a problem on this guy. It is about 18 thousandths behind the hedge with this full flat or not a full flat, but a flat grind. You have a flat up here and it gets about 18 thousandths behind the edge. One thing that is obviously a little bit different is the, uh, the grind lines. You have QSP grind lines. Sorry, it's kind of dirty too. I gotta clean it. You have your grind lines there and then your grind lines from Best Tech. This is like, you have a good satin and you can see the lines, but it's almost like a polished. So I don't, I don't know how they how they do that, but it's more polished look on this S35VN blade than it is on the grind lines for the QSP, uh, for the um, EMP EDC Nimble. Uh, I like the way it looks. I like the way, I mean, because basically when you go through cardboard and whatnot, I mean, you get your switch or whatever, but you can just wipe it off like this and it goes away. Um, very, very sturdy. I love these designs that have a bolster lock. I found myself liking bolster locks better than uh, frame locks or liner locks. I think it's a combination that makes it perfect for most people because you don't have any pressure on the lock bar. Uh, it's very easy to get your thumb in there and out of the way because it has uh, ample room for me to be able to do that. It also has a nice scallop right there to where it makes it just a dream to get your finger in there and get it out of the way. Uh, I love the fact that this blade is sterile. The only thing you see on this is the EMP EDC symbol. And of course, this is a prototype, guys, but I'm pretty sure that this is the way it's going to look whenever you get it. Um, if there is any changes, it's going to be very minute. But same thing on the Nimble. It is a very sterile blade. There is no billboarding or anything like that. I really, really dig that as well. And I think that... Uh, I think Best Tech really killed it. I really did. I didn't know when I was when I heard it was going to Best Tech versus QSP because QSP did such a great job on the nimble. I was like, oh, bold move, but the but the right move for this knife. They killed it. Um, it is a very nimble esque. <coughs> this is kind of John's pocket clip. You can see it is a it is different, but still kind of the same. 
uh, as far as which one of these I liked in pocket better, I mean, obviously this one carries better because it's not near as wide. It's called the Thick Boy. It is not thick this way at all. Matter of fact, it's pretty normal, uh, but it is very wide this way, so it is wider in your pocket. So this one definitely does carry better. However, I want to say that, you know, it's they're very close, but I, I think I like this pocket clip more than I like this pocket clip, even though they're very close and they, and they both work very well. I think I like this. I like the fact that it's a little wider down here, and as you can see, uh, it gets really thin down here for the Nimbles pocket clip. However, look at that fucking Tamascus. Ooh, how pretty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's sexy. Oh, man. I really, really dig that pocket clip and the backspacer on this guy. Speaking of backspacer on the Nimble, you can see that is flush backspacer to the back. And on the um, Thick Boy, it has that gear pattern, frag pattern, whatever you call it, that sticks up a little bit uh, behind the scales. And I actually can notice that that helps with my grip. I can, I can feel it bite in, not sharply, but bite into the back of my palm to really help me <coughs> and know that I'm locked in. I, I like that. Um, I think I would, uh, you know, some people don't like, um, you know, any jimping anywhere, and I get that, but I think this actually serves a really nice purpose to help you grip the knife because it is not sharp at all. I also dig it aesthetically. I think it looks really, really good. Uh, so, yeah, this knife... I didn't actually pick up on the pre-order because I just couldn't, I had so much money tied up on the other on other stuff, pre-orders, and then I'm fixing up my house to get ready to sell and stuff, and I'm really kind of bummed that I didn't, uh, or was not able to do that. I will be picking one of these up, that is 100% for sure, I believe these things are going to, uh, are going to come back, I know John's going to do another run, he's already done another run of the Nimbles from the first one that I did here, so... I am. Uh, I know that I'll be able to pick one up. And matter of fact, I think the green micarta is probably the one that I that I will pick up. I I dig green micarta, but you have quite a few options, and you can go check out his website for the options that he had available for this. So yeah. So anyways, this thing, thick boy, not very thick. We're gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and do size comparisons and some specs on this guy, and you'll notice that it's it's called the thick boy, but it is not because it's thick this way. It's actually pretty perfect on the thickness this way and uh, see what it compares to, you know, to other knives in the collection so you can get a good idea of what this some bitch is like. So sexy. Alrighty, let's see if we can get a good close look at this guy. Nice, nicely done micarta. Really love the patina that this particular kind of micarta uh, comes with as with when you're using it. It actually changes color really, really nice. As you can see, the transition between the micarta and the titanium bolsters is nearly non-existent. I can't feel anything. Very, very well done. As you can see, rounded, chamfered, every single place on this uh, knife. You have very nice flat pocket clip, so there is no hot spots in this on your hand. You don't even feel where the pocket clip is. It's not sharp. It's rounded off right here. It doesn't snag on anything. Good ramp and good clearance. Oh, just very well executed. There is your uh, satin finish on this guy. And then your hole, which is also very nicely done with that bowl and then the slot. Really dig that uh, that design. Uh, it, this one in particular is just perfect for my middle finger flick. It's very intuitive. Um, the thumb flick works, uh, but it's not as intuitive as the middle finger flick for me. But it really works. It works actually some, you know, better than the nimble does in my opinion. As far with the thumb flick. And then, like I said, see if I can actually do it. <laughs> of course. Ah, ah, <laughs> there we go. You can do it. It's actually easier than it. It's not easy, but it is easier to do whenever I'm not underneath the fucking camera. Uh, but I bet you not many people have even tried to do that because it is not a front flipper, guys. It's just not there. But with the good jimping that you have here, it, it can be done. And I think that's really, really fun. Uh, so let's put it in the circle. As you can see, not a large knife, but with the ergonomic lines that this thing has, it is a dream in the hand. See what it compares to. Let's go ahead and put it right next to its little brother, which is not much, not too little compared to that. They're actually pretty, uh, pretty similar in size as far as overall length. But there it is against his first uh, folding knife uh, production knife is the the nimble next to that thick boy. Definitely much larger uh, blade here. Definitely a more EDC style knife, even though this one is. 
I think aesthetically, I really, really dig. Uh, I love the frag pattern on this guy. And then, of course, you can get all kinds of bling like that right there. Sorry, just had to show off one more time. Uh, let's go ahead and put it up against a knife that everybody has probably owned in their lifetime. Here it is against the PM2. So, yep, this is more going to be the Para 3 size. I do not have my Para 3 here. Uh, matter of fact, I gave it away to a friend. So I don't have my Para 3 anymore, but there is your against your PM2. Uh, so definitely, you know, blade to handle ratios, you know, this is kind of the one that everybody gives a hard time with, even though I like it. This one right here, ergonomically, even though you have a smaller cutting edge, you have enough to do what you need to do on a daily basis. <laughs> Could you use this as a work knife? Absolutely sturdy. The, the sturdy build will allow you to do that. But uh, this to me is a great EDC knife. One thing that I didn't mention uh, is that it does have a lanyard hole. The lanyard hole is a little small. Uh, I don't put lanyards on hole, on uh, on knives, but I noticed that this is pretty small. Uh, but I don't think it'll be too small to actually get the paracord in there and do what you have to do for the lanyard hole. But I know you lanyard uh, hole guys, you will like that because it doesn't really take precedence of the pocket clip. No, this does not seat deep carry, but it sits really deep enough, in my opinion, and carries really well because of this bend. You know, it kind of sits it off like this. So I think that design is killer. Uh, a couple other knives to compare it to that I have in the collection. Here it is against the Evo 2.0. I just wanted to let you see the Evo is just barely bigger than this. Uh, and ergonomic lines, obviously, with a very nice finger choil and the way that this kind of swoops back. You've got a little bit more of a swoop. This one, of course, is one of my ergonomic wonderlands of a, of a knife. But comparing these two, this is kind of what I talk about when I'm talking about aesthetics. These two knives are just beautiful. I really, really love them. I mean, obviously, the Evo is aesthetically my favorite knife in the collection but uh, i really wanted to put these two side by side because they're they're kind of polarizing in such a great way i really 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 like that and then of course i've got to flex a little bit because i'm one of my newer knives but also a very good size comparison the uh, oz machine company roosevelt as you can see there uh definitely very similar in size similar um in the uh in the even the blade uh, thickness, I'm uh, sorry, sorry, not thickness, <coughs> but knife as well. And matter of fact, John uh, over at EMP EDC saw my post on this, and he really digs this knife as well. Uh, one of the knives that he would like to get in the collection at one point. So there you go. There are your size comparisons. Uh, not not a you know a very big knife, but as you can see, I don't have all big knives in my collection. Even though I'm the big knife guy, right? Uh, I love great ergonomics great designs and this is one that it hits the nail on the head um if this area right here was to come back not to this little point but actually kind of round back or go back this way it might be a little bit more useful in the backed up grip because it, i do feel me myself poking on that you know if I needed reach, I hardly ever do that. I'm always on a finger troll if I have one. Um, but it's, you know, it's, I think that would probably be the only thing that if I had to nitpick and change something, maybe that rounding off or coming back this way would be, you know, cause let's see with this one, cause even with this, in this backed up grip, it's kind of the same deal with that little poke. I, I think I said the same thing in the nimble, uh, review whenever i thought this this goes back this way it would make it easier and better for me on the backed up grip however this knife is designed to be held like this so uh i don't even know why i mentioned it because if you're not holding the knife like this you're doing an injustice if you're holding it back here cool maybe you need a little bit of reach and you can do what you got to do but this grip right here absolute fucking money and uh, and I really enjoyed carrying this knife. Do not want to send it on to the next reviewer, but unfortunately, I have to. Sons of bitches. So anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by and checking it out with me. Uh, absolutely one of the best knives uh, that I've had recently on the channel. And I really, really appreciate John for allowing some of us guys to check it out uh, for this prototype and uh, getting ready for everybody to see theirs on their pre-order. Obviously, the pre-order just got over, so it's going to be a few months before the guys actually start getting in these knives. Uh, John does a really good job of QCing QC his stuff. But remember, he is only one guy. He's got to do every single one himself. Uh, so give, cut the guy some slack because, uh, holy crap, you know, with, with Jake and doing his his knives and stuff, him and Ryan, I know that's going to be a huge stressful ordeal whenever that happens. Uh, but John's really 
really been kicking ass when it comes to these pre-orders, uh, his knife designs, working with these uh, OEMs. So, yeah, guys, I, I love you all. Uh, stay safe in this fucking crazy world that we are living in, and we will see you in the next one.